Once upon a time, there was a Manhattan Project. Now, I say once upon a time, John Lithgow, because Manhattan Project is both about a nuclear bomb and it's a tall tale, mm -hmm. I think. Is that a fair pairing of adjectives? Yeah, that's a pretty good description of the film. And you yourself are kind of a teller of tales. It's like, it's like you're this kid, maybe grown a little older. Mm -hmm. Is that also fair? Boy, I'm glad you said these things. <laughs> Uh, that's precisely what this character is, and I think that's the nature of the story. I'm an older version of the young hero. Uh, both of us, in the course of the film, grow up. Mm -hmm. We sort of mature. We're both science whizzes, the young and the old. And our zeal for science has, is such a passion that all sorts of other things in our lives have either fallen away or been ignored, uh, comfortably put at a distance. And the drama of the story is seeing these two men, a young man and an older man, come to terms with things that they've uh, ignored in themselves. Yeah, and among which being, we're working on global suicide here. This is not just a gadget anymore. Instruments of death. I'm wondering if you feel that there's a sensibility out there in the world that is also like that that maybe doesn't quite know yet what we are onto here? I think uh, it's something that all of us share. I, I think there's a, a, I think it's one feeling everybody knows, this sort of queasy, sick feeling in our stomachs. Uh, I, I remember it so vividly from when I was a child, the fear of nuclear disaster. Uh, and I think it's something all of us live with now, and that's, a main ingredient in the suspense of this film. Uh, not in a manipulative way, I think in a very important and significant way. I don't want to make this sound like a, an important and serious film. Well, that's the but final miracle, isn't it? It's not. <laughs> it's, not it's, it's about something that, that obsesses us all, and, but that none of us knows what to do about. Mm. I was going to suggest that the real miracle is that somehow it becomes a deft comedy. Mm -hmm. And I would like to fantasize that on the set you must have had as much fun as oh. what we end up seeing. Have you, have you interviewed Marshall Brickman Not yet? yet no. Delightful man. I mean, we laughed all the time. Uh, I think it's, it's Marshall's way of... Uh, Marshall has an incredible sense of irony and comic distance at the moments in the film when there is the most suspense, the most drama, and the most fear, he shoots it through with manic humor. Uh, it's also the nature of scientists, I think. There is a kind of scientist's sense of humor, which is uh, the humor of the film, this kind of mm -hmm. crazy black uh, cabin fever humor that uh, all of these colleagues working in a top secret environment share with each other the only way they can go on. I'm going to get potentially embarrassing to you here because I want to talk to John Lithgow as somebody who's seemingly breaking a lot of molds for the leading man of today's movies. Diversity, vulnerability, what other adjectives might you apply to the John Lithgow you see emerging on screen at least? Tall. <laughs> <laughs> then mean. Uh, well, unpredictable. Uh, I think that's the most fun thing is to be surprising from one moment to the next. Is this a burden to those around you sometimes? No, everybody knows what I'm going to do next by the time the camera rolls, wow. but the audience doesn't. Wow. Uh, and I think uh, it's what I've always felt about acting. You have to astonish people. I mean, the, uh, at its very most basic, acting is making people feel you're saying these words for the first time. There's something surprising about that. I don't know what you're going to say next. Mm -hmm. I have no idea. Indeed you don't, because... In, indeed you don't. I didn't expect that. You, you see, <laughs> uh, and, yeah. and, beyond, and if you take, you know, by extension, when you play a part, you have to be unpredictable. There's nothing that I hate more in, in acting and movies and television, God knows, than predictability, familiarity. and and boring exposition. No wonder you must have been drawn to George S. Kaufman. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> See, you didn't know I was going to that, and wow. I didn't know if I was going to be able to get to that, but I can't wait to ask you about George S. Kaufman and why, mm -hmm. why Kaufman for you? Kaufman was the heart and soul of 
American comedy for about 30 years. Uh, Woody Allen and Marshall Brickman are his uh, descendants. Uh, the absolutely astonishing one-liner that you never expected. George Kaufman practically invented that on the Broadway stage. And that's why I tried to do a one-man show. Unfortunately, I'm so completely different from George S. Kaufman. Well, are you too far from it to, to beg humbly just a piece? Of George S. Kaufman? Mm -hmm. It's been a long time, John. <laughs> I wish I had some glasses. I could. <laughs> Mine aren't the same. Oh, I don't know. Kaufman was... He has all his famous phrases, and by now they're extremely well known. Uh, there's the great story of him. I think it was George Oppenheimer. He was playing bridge with him one night. He was his partner, and he was very frustrated with him. Oppenheimer excused himself to go to the bathroom, and Kaufman said to the others, this is the first time all evening that I've known what my partner has in his hand. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that wasn't in my show. <laughs> but it's one of my favorite. What kind moments. of a voice would you use, or did you use that for him? That was somewhat similar to uh -huh. what I just used. Uh, the fact is, uh, even though I'm a character actor who considers himself capable of doing anything, I'm kind of a uh, sort of m mellow, laid-back, God knows, goyish presence on stage. Kaufman was like a knife. He was thin, he was acidic, he was uh, the ultimate sort mm -hmm. of Jewish comic, very dry, and a kind of, he had a kind of cutting edge to him. All In fact, he was a fairly unpleasant person. Yes. All yes. of this I acted my heart out, but when you're doing a one-man show, there's a limit to how much characterization you can but do. But devastatingly attractive to women. Yes, he was. Indeed. That's and another difference between yeah. him and me. And all of, these, all of these are qualities you must have thrown into Secret Service as well. Wow, where did you get all <laughs> these? I just wish I could have seen you in some of these is the only problem. Secret Service was uh, a William play Gillette. I did, William Gillette. It was one of his two major vehicles. It was Secret Service and Sherlock Holmes that he performed all through the late 19th century to devastating effect. And actually I played that in New York off-Broadway with Meryl Streep. It was like her third role in New York. And uh, had a great time. I'm just going to close out with all these adjectives. Mm -hmm. Devastating, laid back, acidic, elfin. <laughs> all of these in Manhattan Project as well. John Lithgow. John. <laughs> Pleasure to see you as well on screen and off, Thank as you. always. And from New Orleans, talking with John Lithgow for KCTV 5, I'm John Tibbetts.